Hi guys, good evening. I can see some people are already waiting. I can see Jay, I can see Waterman, I can see Fumi. Welcome guys. Thank you all for, for joining. Thank you guys. This section is, see, is a life-changing one. It's a very important one and I don't want you guys to miss it. So if you're going to share this, this live stream, share it. If anything you're going to do to it, just do to it. Just make sure that you get people to come and listen to it because um, it's going to be very impactful, very educating, very informative, and it might just help you land that job that you've been looking for. Okay, so this this section is very important. Please don't miss it. Right, so welcome. Watching from Malawi. Hi, Annie. Hi, Ferdinand. How is Malawi today? What's the weather like? Hi, Whitney. Hi, from Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. Welcome, guys, from all over the world. You're welcome to today's live stream. Hi, Whitney. Hi. Hi, guys. Um. You guys are welcome. I, 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 I don't know if I'm joining from Calabar. Hi. How is Calabar today? Hello, everyone. I'm watching from the Caribbean. Hi. I'm watching from Zambia. Hi. I'm watching from Lagos. Hi, Goma. Hi. You guys are welcome. Watching from Ghana. You're welcome. Amos. Welcome. From Nigeria. Hi, Philip. How is Nigeria weather today? Hi from England. Hi. Hi guys. Welcome to today's live stream. Watching from Port Harcourt. Hi Whitney. Welcome guys. It's from South Africa. Hi Alvin. Hi everyone. From Zambia. You guys are welcome. So I don't want to waste much time because I know some of you have been waiting for me. Um yeah, from Abu Dhabi, okay, from Ogun State, hi, from Ghana, from Abiokuta, from Kaduna, you guys are welcome. Pascal from Grammatoria Education Nigeria, welcome, Pascal. Welcome, everybody. So, guys, um, today's live stream, like I said earlier, is going to be very impactful, so please, you really need to stick around till the end so you will get all the information you need, right? Because it will really help. You guys know that I don't bring things that won't help you on this channel, right? So I have a special guest. She will just introduce herself and then we'll dive right into it. We're talking about, we are basically going to be telling you guys how to, you know, position yourself to get a job, what to do, courses to take, you know, how to go about your CV, your application everything to get a job as a healthcare assistant in the UK, as a senior carer, and even as a nurse, right? So, in fact, it's like I'm already giving it away. So, please let her introduce herself, and then we'll just dive right into it. Thank you very much, Tochi. Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning, wherever you're watching from. I just want to thank you for having me on your show. I do appreciate this opportunity to speak to your audience. My name is Laura and I'm from Grammatorial Education. I'm based in the UK, but Grammatorial, we also have our Africa branch in Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria. So Grammatorial is primarily an educational consultancy. So what we do at Grammatorial is that we offer advisory and counseling services to students that want to go and study abroad. We have partner universities in the United Kingdom. We also have partners with prep schools and colleges. So if there's anybody here that wants to send their children to boarding schools in the UK, we're able to do that. We also do tuition, online tuition. Maybe you're already in the UK and you're looking for how to get your children a scholarship into an independent private school. That's something that at Grammatorial Education, we also help and assist with. And what we have been doing for the past year is we've been providing training qualifications as well. So we partner with um, Ofqual accredited bodies in the United Kingdom. If you don't know what Ofqual is, Ofqual, they are the regulatory body for, you know, qualifications in the UK. 
So we provide national vocational qualifications, or you may call it occupational qualifications in health and social care, as well as many other subjects. So today we're going to, like Tochi has already said, we're going to be talking about our health and social care courses and the strategy that can land you a job as a senior carer in the UK or Ireland. So we're talking about the UK or Ireland primarily, and we're talking about strategies that have been tested, tried, and found to be successful. So I'm sure you're going to have, you know, a very good time. You're going to learn a thing or two from today's session. So that's a, a very brief summary about who we are and what we do at Grammatorial. Welcome, Laurel. We are happy to have you here. Welcome. Hi, Oliver. Thank you, Thank you for joining. Um, so basically, for somebody who is just hearing about moving to the UK as a healthcare assistant, and the person is also hearing moving as a senior carer, and the person is confused, right? Um, what's the basic difference between a senior carer role and a healthcare assistant role? Okay, thank you very much for that question. There's quite a big difference between a carer, a caregiver, and a senior carer. So who is a carer? A carer is anybody that takes care of someone else. So you can support someone from children to vulnerable adults to people living with disabilities, anybody that needs care, that needs your help, you know, and primarily mothers are carers. Mothers are first caregivers. So every one of us have a basic, you know, caregiving skill. So in the UK, in Ireland, you do not really need any qualification to be a carer. As long as you have those core skills of empathy, you know, you're able to prove that you've cared for someone in the past and you're willing to learn, you can be a carer. However, a senior carer takes its steps higher than just a carer. So as a senior carer, you're qualified, you have a qualification. And that qualification is regulated by the CQC, you know, it's regulated by Ofqual, and you are able to administer medication or you are able to carry out some phlebotomy skills, which is like cannulation. You're able to actually go beyond just personal care into clinical skills. So a senior carer, you can look at it as the bridge between a carer and a nurse, or you can call it a nurse assistant. So a senior carer is able to perform some core clinical skills and administer medication that a carer cannot do. In terms of a carer, like I said earlier on, you know, just your basic GCSE, your West African exam, council exam, your secondary school liver exam is sufficient to land you a job as a carer. Maybe if you're already in the UK, or if you're applying from outside the UK and Ireland where the competition is very stiff, you may need to go a step higher by getting qualified, by getting experience, and just putting yourself above that competition to show to the employer or the organization, you know, it's, it's like you're building a case for them why they should hire you. So you've actually gone the extra mile to invest in yourself. So how can you get qualified as a senior carer? You need to have an NVQ3. So when I say NVQ3, for those that don't know what it is, it's a national vocational qualification or a level three diploma that is RQF. It's a regulated qualification. So you can't just get a, a level three diploma by, yes, you can buy some online courses, but it goes above just online courses. You need to be assessed. You need to meet some criteria and you need to be what? You need to have like your work IQ aid, EQ aid, that's external quality assurance, internal quality assurance, and it needs to be endorsed by Ofqual. So once you get this qualification, you are a qualified senior carer. And then you, you are qualified to actually administer medication. So most organizations like care homes, home care, domiciliary agencies, private hospitals, or even the NHS would look at, you know, investing in hiring a senior carer from overseas. Because whilst we always say that recruitment is free, recruitment may be free from the employee side, but from the employer side, recruitment is very expensive. So it costs between 7,000 to 12,000 pounds to hire 
a carer or a senior carer or a nurse from outside of the UK. So it's a study that was carried out and it shows that it costs these organizations a lot of money to hire you. So what value are you bringing to the table? How do you prove to these organizations that yes, I have invested in myself, I am qualified, this is a regulated profession, most of these, all care homes are, are governed or need to be compliant with CQC. So they are very careful, you know, their process of recruitment is quite an onerous one. What I mean by that is it's quite lengthy and, you know, they have to follow certain procedures. So it's not something that they take lightly. So knowing that they do not take these things lightly, what do you need to do? So to answer your question, Toji, a caregiver is just someone that has empathy and caregiving skills. And a senior carer is someone that is qualified, that has done courses that are approved by Ofqual, at least in the United Kingdom, and FETAC in the Republic of Ireland to qualify them as a senior carer. And the difference between these two roles is that one is allowed to do only personal care and assist the nurse, whilst the others can actually administer medication, can carry out clinical skills, and works very closely with the nurse. And as a senior carer, you know, you are proving to your employer that you've invested in yourself and you can quickly progress to the role of a nursing associate or even further studies to become a nurse. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm yeah. putting something today. Yeah. Um, so Jay is asking, MVQ Level 3 Award in Health and Social Care. I learned it's different from MVQ level three diploma. My question is, will the level, will the level three award count? Thank you very much for that question. Yes, as you correctly noted, the award is different from the diploma. So you can get the award from Read. You can get the award from, you know, you can get the award online. The award is just to say that you have some theory so the award, it does not, if you look at the award, it may be 15 credits or 25 credits, but the full diploma is 65 credits. And I think the extended diploma is 90 credits. So when you're buying those courses, you need to look at the units. You need to look at the units. There are 15 mandatory units and there are optional units. Amongst the optional units are a lot of clinical units. So you would look at the units you are doing. Are you just doing theory based? Do you have some clinical skills amongst those units you are doing? So the award or the certificate doesn't really have those clinical units and it doesn't have the complete 65 credits. So the award is like a CPD, if you, if you like to put it that way. It's just a smaller version or a part of the full course. So the award does not qualify you for the full qualification and thus cannot qualify you to become a senior carer a band three care worker i hope that answers the question right okay now for somebody who wants to become a senior carer in the uk how exactly does the person go about getting all these courses you mentioned okay so let's go through the process now i believe so much in process you know so we've like started from top, which is fine, but now let's come down to the basics and go through the process. So to qualify to become a senior carer, there are several pathways you can take, one of which is apprenticeship. So if you're already working in a care home or you're already working in a care setting, you can ask your employer for further training. So the basic qualification you need is a level three diploma in health and social care or in adult care. So that's the way the qualification comes in healthcare support, health and social care or adult care. So those are the two basic qualifications that you want to get. So you can go through the apprenticeship routes if you are already in the healthcare sector or if you're not in the healthcare sector, you do not have a background in science and you want to, you know, change careers into this sector, then you can self-fund yourself. So you can, you can self-fund and you can buy the course or you can enroll on the course with an accredited partner. So make sure that you are enrolling with an off-call accredited organization and then you start your training. So training usually lasts up to anything between three to 12 months. So 
at grammatorial education, we do the training fast tracked. So when we say fast track, it means it is really intensive. It's very, very intensive. So we try to squash the whole units, about 22 units, into three to six months. And during this period, you're going to be having clinical training as well. You'll be attached to a hospital or placed in a hospital where you would learn core clinical skills in caregiving, core clinical skills in administration of medication, core clinical skills in cannulation, like taking blood, intravenous, uh, fixing intravenous lines, and actually phlebotomy skills. So you're going to learn not just the theory aspect, which you'll be doing online and also intuition, you will also get clinical skills. At the end of your course, you will be assessed. You will have to provide evidence that you have gotten the practical experience. You will also be assessed for your theoretical knowledge and you will now get your certificate if you pass from the United Kingdom. It is then and only then that you can say, I am a qualified senior carer. And you would have gotten some form of uh, some experience also in care planning, in how to write a care plan. You get experience in, you know, all the, uh, there are lots of legislation and regulations that govern the care industry. So you will get all that uh, knowledge. And then you can say, I am a, I am a senior carer. So those are the steps you take to become a, a senior carer. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Let's take some questions. Okay. Sinkala says, I have done an online health and social care level five diploma. Is it relevant for senior care, carer? Um, so it depends on if you're if your level five is, is um, accredited by Ofqual and how many credits it, it carries. So most of the online ones I've seen or people that have sent me their online qualification, it's like CPD. So they just take two units out of the whole, you know, suite of the level five units. And that does not qualify you to say I'm level five. Just imagine that you're studying accounting in the university and you say because you took two accounting courses, does that qualify you to be an accountant? I've taken one or two courses in law. That does not qualify me to say I am a lawyer because I've done one or two law courses. So that's the same thing with some of these online courses. They just bring out like two units out of the whole course and they call it level five, which is actually correct in itself, but it's not the full suit of level five that you have done. To get a full level five suit, there are a lot of process that you need to go to go through a lot of assessment. You need to have like practical experience in a care setting and that would qualify you. You know, at the end of the day, you get a certificate that is off call accredited and you can say I am level five accredited. So it doesn't in its way, in, in, in that sense, qualify you to become a senior carer. As you understand, the word senior connotes some form of experience. So if you do not have relevant experience, you can't really call yourself senior. So I would say just taking an online course does not qualify you to say you're a senior carer. Um, Itunu Busayo is asking, I have done MVQ3 Health and Social Care. Um, okay. With clinical experience. Yeah, and it's not been easy getting a job. It's not, she's not, it's not a question. So, she's asking. Yeah, so it's, you know, I would say in your case, like what we do at Grammatorial, as part of the level three diploma that we provide, we have, uh, we have a week that we dedicate to career support for all our learners. Because at the end of the day, there's no point investing a lot of money doing a level three diploma. It's expensive. The course is expensive. It's not cheap because it's a proper qualification. So in, 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 in terms of the support that we provide to our learners, I don't know where you did your level three diploma, but you know, a few of our learners, you know, or I'll say all our learners on the course will go through the career week. And during the career week, we have to help you with your CV, build your CV. This is a UK qualification. You're doing it outside of the UK. Your work experience is outside of the UK. So we need to assist our learners with crafting their CV, making sure that they have the right experience and the right knowledge and putting their CV to be relevant. I'm sure Tochi has talked about it. 
making your CV relevant to the job role that you're applying for. So we have some form of career support. Whilst we do not guarantee that you will get a job, because the job, getting a job is, you know, it rests solely on the hiring manager. So maybe there's something you're not doing right. When we started the career week, I think the following week after our first career week, we started getting people getting calls for interview immediately because there's needs to, your, your CV needs to be right. That's number one. It needs to be tailored. And then number three, you need to be strategic, which is what we're talking about now, applying to the right companies which companies are currently hiring. So if you're just scattering your CV everywhere, that's fine. It's a game of numbers. You may get somebody that will pick you, but you know we go beyond just saying, put your CV everywhere. We're quite strategic in the companies that we're applying to or the organizations that we're applying to. So for you to know, I would say the first thing you want to check is your CV and your cover letter. The second thing you want to check is, I'm sure where you study, they should, they should offer support to their learners. But if they are not offering support, you may want to get like a coach or a mentor or someone that has quite some understanding about the healthcare organizations and systems in the UK and who is applying that will guide you through the process. Because applying blindly at times, you may not know what you're doing and you may not know what you're doing wrong. Let me give you an example, Tochi. Um, I, I, there was a company that is currently recruiting and I sent the links to my learners and, uh, I happened to know the recruiter for that particular domiciliary care home and the learners, they put in their application and she sent me, she said, look at what your learners see their application. So the lady asked like, um, when are you available to work? And you know, it's domiciliary care. You should be available. You should be flexible. And these learners, they put, I'm available only Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Fridays, and only morning shifts. Come on, how do you cherry pick when you haven't even gotten the job? You're already choosing your shift. And then they asked, um, are you willing to, uh, it's a domiciliary role, and there was another question in the form that they were filling. And they asked the question like, um, how often are you willing to move? How mobile are you? How flexible are you with mobility? And the person wrote 25 percent for a domiciliary role, 25 percent. So even though I knew that that company was hiring, even though they had said to me, you know, ask your learners to apply, I can't control what you put in your application, and I can't control the decision of the hiring manager. I can only put the opportunity in front of you. And then th these learners had gone ahead and said, oh, I don't want to work all the time. I have children. I want to do this or I want to do that or I want to have time off to myself. Saturdays, Sundays, I do not want to work. And that could mean an automatic rejection even before you get interviewed. So sometimes some of these questions in the applications are not trick questions to catch you out, but they are actually questions to see if you're a good fit for the organization. So it's difficult for me to tell whilst, why that person is getting rejected. But such a case, you can easily see why some people get rejected, even though they are qualified. So coming applying for a job in, in a country that you're not currently domiciled, where the employer has to spend money to recruit you and you know spend time recruiting from international staff, recruiting international staff, you need to go over and beyond in terms of your qualification, in terms of your dedication, in terms of your commitment. So it is then and only then that uh, recruiters or hiring managers will see that you're actually committed and you're going to be an addition to the company. What benefits are you going to bring to them if you start choosing shifts and saying, I want to work only in the mornings or only on Mondays and Tuesdays? You know, you're just like saying, I'm not prepared to work. So these are some of the reasons that we have seen in answer to Itono's uh, question. All right. Um, Angelica is Prince is saying, will the Alison's diploma count in nursing assistant? So I do not want to mention like names of companies or organizations because I respect those organizations and what they do. However, you know, just doing an online course does not qualify you to become, you know, to say I'm a nursing assistant. You have to go over and beyond just the course. You have to get practical experience. So just doing an online course, no, the answer is no, does not qualify you 
to be a nursing assistant. You need to get, you need to have relevant experience. And that's what we do at Grammatorial, our level three diploma in health and social care. You'll actually be, uh, from day one, you'll be placed in a hospital, in a standard international style or setting hospital. And you would learn the core skills, the core clinical skills that qualify you to be a senior carer. Okay. Um, Annie is saying, I'm already in the health sector. I'm a qualified psychotherapist who holds a bachelor's degree in counseling. And I have four years clinical experience working in a hospital. Do I apply for senior job? Um, hi, Anne. I would say instead of applying for senior jobs, why don't you register with the HCPC under the Allied Health um, Care Professions? I'm sure psychotherapists will come under that list. And I know that there are lots of organizations and you know care homes, uh, residential care, schools with for children with learning disabilities that are looking for psychotherapists. So I think you will definitely get a job. As, as a psychotherapist, if you know what you're doing and know how to apply and how to go about the HCPC register. So I wouldn't suggest that you go for, you know, senior carer role because you're already in a shortage occupation um, career or role. Okay, someone say, how can they reach out to us? Sorry, sorry to interject. I am in North Yorkshire. So, Tochi, I don't know if you want to put um, our email. It's info at grammatorial.com. So, you can reach us at info at grammar with a double M A R O, tutorial.com. And we will pick up your email. So, we would prefer emails. Emails are the easiest and fastest way for us to get back to you because our email is monitored by more than one person. But if you want to reach me personally, you can also reach me on Instagram. Our uh, Instagram account is Grammatorial Education. So it's just at Grammatorial Education as one word. Grammatorial Education. That's our Sorry, Instagram. Sorry, what's the email again? It's info at grammatorial.com. info at grammatorial.com so someone says i just saw a question from jamaica so let me touch briefly about the red list and you know whatnot um as part of what we do we have a sister company that is into recruitment so we are actually uh recruiting for a major supplier to the nhs on the nhs framework we're recruiting international nurses. Like this, right? Sorry, on the screen. Info at grammatorial.com. Yes, that's correct. Info at well, I, would, I would also at the end, I'll also put it in the description box. Okay. I'll put your Instagram handle, your email, yeah. description box. So anybody who is watching this video anytime can always click on it and reach out to you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. So yes, so someone was saying they're from Jamaica and I was just trying to respond to that person. So if you're outside of the WHO red list zone, it means that you can be recruited by third party. So excuse me, you can be recruited by a, a reputable agent. I use the word agent with a caveat because when you say agent and you know, you're outside of the UK, you're just thinking of people that act as middlemen or reputable recruitment agencies, what they do is that they recruit for a fee for the employer. So they do not charge the employee for recruitment. So we recruit and we get paid by the employers, by the NHS trust or the care home or whoever we are recruiting for. So you can actually be you know, targeted by a third party recruiter if you are outside of the red list zone. So that person that is in Jamaica, you need to identify a reputable agency or recruitment company, and you can get recruited directly and easy, very easily. Um, in terms of Ireland, we've been talking so much about the UK. So in terms of Ireland, for those of you that may have interest in relocating to the Republic of Ireland, you know, it's no news that the Republic of Ireland is also suffering a severe shortage of healthcare workers. 
and they are in dire need of you know carers in the home care sector so i also know that there are care homes that are recruiting lots of people have you know gotten jobs in 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 care homes as well but the, the the main need is in the home care sector so by home care i mean domiciliary care going from house to house providing care for people in their own homes so you can qualify but most companies in ireland are looking for people that are qqi level five qualified and the funny thing or the interesting thing or the irony is that you cannot get a qqi level five outside of the republic of ireland so what we do is that the level three diploma in healthcare support or in adult care is equivalent by the the standard of comparison is equivalent to a qqi level five if you look at the units most of them are similar so if you get the level three diploma you can also use it for the republic of ireland some of my learners in you know in our january cohort have you know said they have called up agencies in new zealand and they have said that this qualification is valid in new zealand and they can be recruited by third parties to new zealand as well so this qualification is i would say is a big deal it is a big deal because even in the united kingdom not many people that work in the care industry have a level three diploma in health and social care or are qualified so you know you just need to make sure that you're in the right place you're in the right setting you're registering with the right provider that would offer you support in terms of job in terms of so like my my current learners we have a whatsapp group we have a telegram group where we post you know valid links every other every week and they go and apply and some of them have gotten interviews some of them have gotten jobs so it's a matter of you know it's a matter of time and they have not rounded up the course yet so they're still on the course they're still uh, you know in the final stages of the course and we're already starting to see success so i'll say choosing the right provider is key provider that cares for you and it's not just wanting to sell courses but it's actually out to help you like i would say about myself i came to this country as a student and i got a job as a tier two worker at the time it was called tier two that was many years ago uh, in 2010 i came so a long time ago when getting a tier two job was like raw gold not now that almost every company there are over 60 something thousand companies or 70 thousand companies and the sponsors uh, license at the time i came i came on a scholarship lots of uh, my my classmates went back to nigeria or some of them got jobs in the oil sector but i decided that i was going to stay back and get a sponsorship job so what did i do i invested in courses i invested in myself I was applying and I was just getting rejections. As I was sending the application, I kept getting rejected and rejected and rejected. So I worked as a, I, I trained or I studied as an engineer. I had to go and check the companies and find out what certifications, what qualifications, what software are they using in the engineering industry in the United Kingdom. And I had to go and train myself for those qualifications. And the moment I started to put those things on my CV and I'd gotten those software skills, those you know certifications, the jobs kept rolling in and the rest is history now. So I would say investing in yourself, investing in your training, investing in getting the clinical skills as a senior carer, you get lots of clinical skills of, you know, of utmost importance is the phlebotomy skills that you will get, which is, you know, only nurses I would say can do it. So investing in yourself and taking out time to get experience is really key in your journey. It's a strategy that would land you a job as not just a carer, but as a senior carer very fast in the UK or Republic of Ireland. Thank you. Right. Um, I can see a lot of people are interested in Ireland. You guys have heard it. That's the essence of this video. You can move to UK, you can move to Ireland, right? And um, with these qualifications. So someone is saying, hi, for us in Nigeria, how can we join your training? Okay, so if you are in Nigeria and you want to join our level three um, healthcare support course, you can actually send us an email. So you can send an email to the number uh, Tochi has pinned on the screen, not the number, sorry, the email. It's info at grammatorial.com. I think it's pinned there. 
or you can send me uh, a DM on Instagram. If you go on our Instagram page, I've pinned the numbers of our rep. So either you try to locate me on Instagram or you go through info and someone will get back to you. So we have an office in Lagos. Our office is at Ajao Estate. We have a physical presence in the United Kingdom as well. So our address and everything is there if you want to, you know, see us. If you're in the UK, if you want to come physically, we do physical trainings as well now. So if you want to visit us physically in, in Nigeria, we are at Ajao Estate in Lagos. And you do not need to be in Nigeria to participate in this course. So wherever you are, if you are in Nigeria, if you're in Ghana, if you're in Cameroon, if you're in the United Arab Emirates, if you're in the United Kingdom, you can join this course. So most of our lectures, they happen via Zoom online and we are migrating to an LMS system. So you're going to be getting lots of your notes and your courses online. And in addition, we also offer hospital placements as well. So you will be required to go to a hospital or you'll be placed with a hospital where you will go two or three times a week. So if you go in two times a week, you'll be covering 12 hour shifts, which equates to 24 hours a week. That's a requirement of the course. But if you decide that 12 hours is too long for me, I want to go three days a week, then you do eight hour shift. So it's a requirement of the course that you need to provide evidence of your clinical experience. So if you are outside of you know, Nigeria, we can discuss with you how to get a hospital where you will be placed. Or if you are in the UK and you're already working in care, then you do not need to go over and beyond. We'll discuss with you how we can give you the phlebotomy training and how we can do some in-house training for you in addition to your care experience that you're already getting by reason of working in the care sector. It says, hi, please note, I've been, email I've been emailing Grammatoria without an answer. Is there any other email I can use? Oh, I'm really sorry about that. Um, Nokwanda, I'm sorry that you haven't gotten an answer. Maybe your email has been going to our, our spam mail, so I will check. You know, I'm just going to make a note of your name, and after this live, I will go and check for your, if that's the email, if your name will come up, I will check and I will reply to you. But Nokwanda, if you want to send us another email now and use your name as the subject, so that I can pick it up. If you want to send us another email on the back or the same trail with the email you've been sending, and I will pick it up tonight. So Tak Kin asks, what is the awarding body? So for the course that we offer, the level three diploma in healthcare support, the awarding body is TQ UK. So the awarding body is TQ UK. You can go and check them out online. Training qualifications, United Kingdom. They are one of the foremost, you know, um, awarding bodies of qualifications in the UK. And we are accredited partners with TQ UK. AB Mustafa, yes, you can do our course in Freetown, Syria alone. You can do our course in Freetown, Syria alone. I just want to state that there is a minimum requirement for this course. So we do not just take everybody. So we do not take everybody on the course. So the minimum requirement, just to let you know, to manage your expectations, because I've seen some people come and, you know, it's we don't take everybody. So in order to manage your expectations, please make sure you have a minimum of a credit in English language and math secondary school. Make sure you have a minimum of a credit. Because if uh, we found out in previous cohorts that people have applied or registered with us with a pass in maths because they had maybe a, an undergraduate degree. And it's very, we need to be very strict, I'm afraid, because we are working with an awarding body. So we do not award these qualifications on our own. So these are the requirements that have been set by the awarding body and we can't go against their requirements. So the requirement is that you must have a minimum of uh, credits in English and math. 
And as our own requirements, we ask you to write a statement of purpose to, you know, to prove your passion for care. Because if your end goal is to get a job as a senior carer and you're not passionate about care, I would say there's no point just enrolling on this course. There's no point just seeing this course as a means. And some people think that because they enroll on the course, then automatically they've gotten a job. No, I'm not going to deceive you or lie to you. If it's something that you're not passionate about, you're not going to have the stamina to make the applications. When you go for an interview, your, life, your lack of passion will just shine through. Let me use that word. Or will just, you know, will, will come across to the, hire, the hiring manager that you do not really want to do this job. You just want to see it as an end to or as a means to an end, you know, to leave the country. So we do not support that. And another thing we do not support, because I've gotten so many DMs of people telling me, let's just pay you for the qualification. We don't want to go through the process. We don't do that at Grammatorial. So I'm saying this live and clear. I do not sell COS. So if your message has to go with, say, please buy and sell COS, oh, you're in the wrong place. Please don't send me those kind of messages. If your message is just to tell me that, Please just give us the certificate. We're not going to do the course. Let it be heard live here. I'm going to go and save this video and use it as my witness that we do not sell certificates. And if you enroll on the course thinking that because you have paid, yes, it's expensive, that you're going to get a certificate without working, we also do not do that. We do not do that. So if you're going to enroll on the course, you must make sure that you're going to put in the hard work you're going to put in the dedication, you're going to turn up, you know, for your lectures, and you're also going to attend your hospital placement. Without that, I'm sorry, you're not guaranteed graduating, and you're not guaranteed that your dream senior carer job. I have to tell you the truth, I'm not going to sugarcoat things for you. The course takes between three to six months. So I'll say give it, give and take six months, because you need time to do all your assignments, your assessments, put together your portfolio, because there's a portfolio that you need to build. So you need to put together your portfolio and all your evidence, and that takes time at the end of the day. But what we'll say is that within two to three months of being enrolled on the course, we start to introduce you to job applications. So we not only prepare you for the course, but we make you job ready. We make you like really employable. So we give you employability skills from how to market your qualifications, how to sell yourself. We do not promise you or guarantee you a job because we don't have those jobs in our pockets. But what we guarantee you is that you will get a qualification that can stand anywhere in the world. We guarantee you that we'll give you the right support, 100% support in you know, marketing your qualification and landing your dream senior carer job. Okay, we already answered how long the course takes because there are a lot of people asking the same question. Um, so let's so it's not a another. short course, it's not a quick fix. So if you're looking for a quick fix, you want to travel in two weeks, then this course is not for you. But if you're looking to follow like a due process kind of thing, six months to nine months to one year, if you're willing to wait and put in that amount of work and dedication then I'll say this course is for you. But if you're looking for a quick fix, oh, two weeks, just give me a COS, just give me a job link, then no, we don't do that. We don't guarantee such things yet. Okay. Um, Kimoma here is asking, hi, I'm in Debbie. I'm working as HC currently. How do I enroll, please? I just joined your live now. Okay, so thank you, Kimoma. So to enroll... You can go on my Instagram. The enrollment form is just on my Instagram. It's on my bio. So if you go on Grammatorial Instagram, it's Grammatorial Education. That's my Instagram. So it's not, don't go on Grammatorial. I think there's another Instagram page called Grammatorial. But go on Grammatorial Education. That's the correct one. If you go on my IG page and click on my bio, you will see the link to register. Registration is not free. So registration involves us, you know, verifying that you meet the minimum requirement. So not everybody that registers will be successful on, in getting on the course. Let me say that now, because some people, once they register, they say, oh, you have scammed me. I didn't get on the course. No, I'm saying it. Not everybody that registers will get on the course. 
So if you have listened to what I've said, that you need a minimum requirement, and you know you don't meet the minimum requirements, and you go ahead to register and pay, I'm sorry, you just done you know you've just done your own thing so you need to be able to make sure you meet the requirements which is that you're going to write a statement of purpose that shows why you want to come on this course and why you want to change careers to become a senior carer if you're not already in the healthcare sector because we know that this passion is really valid for you to land a job so if you cannot demonstrate passion and in your SOP, you cannot demonstrate, you know, good written English because English is a key requirement of the senior carer role. You need to pass your IELTS. So let me say that now. Some people said they didn't know they, need to, they needed to pass IELTS. So English is very key because you're going to be working in an English language speaking country. So communication is key in the health sector. So we need to validate that your English language is good. And for the course, there's a lot of written work. You're going to be doing lots of assignments, lots of assessments, lots of writing, evidence, portfolio, and research. So we need to be able to verify that you, you have what it takes to come on this course. So that's why we charge a fee for registration and administration. And after registration, if we believe that you are, you, 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 you are a good candidate for the course and you can make it through and see it through and follow through, and we will, you know, call you for an interview or just have a word with you and you will get an admission letter and be admitted onto the course. So please, guys, it's a process. It's a process. Relocating to the UK is a process. You know, we didn't land here at, you know, just overnight. We didn't arrive. And let me just sound that as a word of caution to those people that are looking for a quick fix or easy route. Be careful. I know Tochi has said this so many times, but I'm just going to say it again because I get so many of those questions come true. Be very, very careful. So many people have come and they have found out that the job did not exist. They spent a lot of money. Yes, you made it in and the job does not exist because you, you paid your way through. You wanted it quickly. But if you're willing to invest some time, if you're willing to invest hard work, it will surely pay off at the end of the day. And um, Oliver is saying, I'm sending a mail to you now. I mean, UK Cardiff to be precise. Okay. So, yes, if you're in Cardiff, I'm sure we can assist you depending on your situation, where you're currently working, what you're doing. You know, we can definitely, we can definitely assist you. Um, what levels do you offer? Is it possible to start from level four? We look at it on a case by case basis. We offer the level three, level four and level five. Level five qualifies you to become a registered care manager. So if you do the level five, you can become a registered care manager. But to do the level five, maybe you have you have a nursing degree or you have a relevant healthcare degree, then we can you know put you onto the level five or the level four in adult care. So Rack, please get in touch with us, send us an email, just put your subject, you know, put your subject like if you are a healthcare worker already, you can say healthcare worker in Cardiff. Or whatever your situation is business administrator in cardiff just use that as the subject of the email and we'll get back to you within the next you know few days and um, so zoe says i'm a nurse from a red list country i want to use the carrier route what shall i do cool so zoe as a nurse from a red listed country like i said earlier you cannot be targeted by a third party because you are in a red listed country so although we are currently our sister company is recruiting for international nurses and many other agencies are recruiting for international nurses they cannot recruit you and if you send your cvs to them they would not you know accept you however you can apply directly you can apply directly to the nhs you can apply directly to care homes and you can apply directly to domiciliary care agencies highlighting that you're a nurse and you already have these skills and you can also do one or two theory skills online because you're already a nurse and you already have the practical experience so i wouldn't recommend this course for you because you're already a nurse so this course will not add value to you in terms of clinicals it may add theory value to you 
but I'll say you can just go online and buy one or two theory courses because you're already a nurse. So once you do that, make sure you have a good CV. If you need our help in mentoring or coaching you, you can reach out to us. We can off we offer a service, mentoring and coaching service. I'm just going to start it and I'll see how it goes. We can offer you that service and actually mentor and coach you to get a job as a senior carer. And um, so Sinkala says, how much is the cost? And can I do it from Zambia online? Okay, thank you, Sinkala. The cost, I'm not going to mention the price online because the price is changing. It changes, it does vary because it's an international cost. And I don't know how much, you know, your your money or your currency in Zambia is, and it fluctuates. So it changes depending on the currency. So if you send us an email, we'll let you know how much it is. But just to give you a range, I would say in pounds, it's over a thousand pounds. Just to give you an idea, a range, it's over a thousand pounds. And you can go online and you know you can, can search for the level three diploma in health and social care or the MVQ three diploma in health and social care. We offer practical experience. So I would say we offer a lot more than what you would see online because we offer hospital placements and we also offer career support alongside this course. So yes, that's the range. All right, so we, ask, we have a lot of how much, how much. So she's, she has answered the question. Um, then we have, okay, someone is just, she's saying well done. So, thank you, Amanda. So, for those of you that are interested in relocating to the Republic of Ireland, there are good opportunities in the Republic of Ireland. There was um, a health fair um, show that I I witnessed or attended today, and there are lots of opportunities I would say in the Republic of Ireland. However, for the Republic of Ireland, for 12 months, you cannot go with your dependents. So that's why a lot of people are not going for it. So I think that the competition for Ireland is actually less than the UK. But the process for Ireland is a bit longer than UK. So the Irish process means that you need to get your general work permit. And after you get your general employment permit, before you get your visa, you know, your work um, visa. So it's a different process. And I think it's beyond the scope. But I wouldn't go like into the process here. But the strategy is to get yourself qualified, is to get relevant experience, is to get this um, comparable or equivalent QQI level five qualification and start to market yourself, market your skills to get the jobs. Okay. I think we've taken all the questions here. So you would want to like maybe tell us anything else you feel like we should know. Okay, or, or so what, everything. Thank you. So in summary, I would say, in summary, thank you, Tochi, for having me. You've been so patient with me. And I felt really at home, you know, being a guest on your show. I didn't feel rushed or anything. I feel we've been able to cover a lot. And if there is anything we have not covered or any question you feel that we have not covered, please send me an email. I'm going to be looking at my emails. Uh, God help me not to be up all night tonight, but I'm going to be responding to emails tonight. I don't work on Sundays per se, but I will continue responding to emails on Monday. So if you do not hear back from me tonight, you check on Monday and Tuesday, but please let the questions come, let the emails come through. Um, our next cohort for the course is starting this March. So we have a cohort starting on the 27th, and then we have um, a, another stream of that cohort that would follow shortly. So we try to run cohorts every other month because we also, uh, we're also also delivering career support to our current learners. So we do not want to you know, inundate or overwhelm ourselves with too many learners. So we have a long waiting list as well. Like I said earlier, we do not just take everybody for the sake of you know, registering people or taking people. 
we make sure that you understand what you're going into we make sure that you understand why do you want to make this career switch so if you're if you're thinking of enrolling with us please make sure that you're going to be ready to do the hard work you're going to be ready to put in the time you're going to be ready to invest everything that you really want to make this work and as grammatoria we can assure you that we will be there with you every step of the way we'll be there with you to hold your hands to guide you through the course we will not allow you to fall back by the wayside we will push you we'll make sure that you're motivated we'll make sure that you are really happy being on this course most of our learners have said it has been a life-changing journey for them it's been a life-changing it's been a transformational experience for them just being on this course because we want you to experience what it is working in the healthcare sector in the uk even before you leave your country before you leave nigeria ghana syria alone you know wherever you are the uae we want you to have a feel so that when you come to the uk your expectations are managed you know what to expect you can hit the ground running and people will look back or your or your employer will look and say we made the right decision employing you we made the right decision you know investing in you to bring you all the way from overseas to come and work for us and we're trying to build a name we're trying to build a brand we just don't want to be a qualification seller we don't want to just be another kid on the block we want to be you know we want to complete the full life circle to actually help you to get your qualification help our children to get their education help people to get their desired scholarships or get into the desired universities of their choice and also ensure that you are happy in whatever career path or whatever study path that you choose to go thank you very much tochi for having me it's been a pleasure being live with you thank you so much for coming there are just two questions i don't know whether we should take them um it's just someone just he just wants to know how much nurse assistants earn in ireland and then rack kims is, is saying how many practical hours um are required to successfully complete the course and that's it but don't okay thank you so much i'll answer the first question uh is twenty seven thousand euros is the minimum pay required for the republic of ireland to qualify for a general employment permit as a home care worker. So any company that is offering you less than 27,000 euros, it means that you will not get that visa or employment permit. So you need to be 27,000 euros or more. I've seen people get up to 30, 32, depending on your qualification and experience, but the minimum is 27,000 euros. And for Rakkin, I don't have the total um, practical hours. I don't know if Mr. Pascal can help me with that. But Rack, if you send us an email, I'll give you the total hours. But I think that in total, the guided learning hours is about 488 hours or so, 400 hours and above. That's the total guided learning hours. However, we've split it. So we have about 200 and something hours for practical Please don't hold me to this word. I'll confirm to you via email if you send me an email. But it's over 100 hours and we have split that. We've worked it out that in 12 weeks, if you do 24 hours, so 24 times 12, that's over 200, definitely. Over 240 hours. Over 240 hours. So send me an email and I will confirm that to you. Thank you so All right. much. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I'm sure somebody Thank has taken something home today. Um, the, her email or their email is on the screen, but I'll still leave it in the description box of this video. You can always watch it. If you're just joining us, this, this video will always be here on YouTube for you guys to watch. So you can always watch and listen to what she had to say and um, do the needful. Reach out to them. I'll leave all their details in the description box. I'll leave her Instagram handle, their email, them, and they'll respond to you. Okay, so Mr. Pascal is saying it's over. It's over four hundred hours blended and clinical. Yeah, thank you for confirming that, Pascal. And just a quick word before we go, uh, Tochi. The level yeah. three diploma in adult care or healthcare support can also be used as um, 
a pathway to the one-year top-up degree in dental nursing. So if you're thinking of qualifying to become a dental nurse in the UK, dental nursing is an area that is overlooked. That is an area that so many people are not aware of. Dental nursing is just one year top up with a level three diploma in healthcare support. So if you have the ROQF level three diploma, that's the full diploma, not the CPD, you just need one year and you become a dental nurse with your registration with the GDC, the General Dental Council of the UK, you'll be registered within one year. So you can also think about other pathways. Where can this lead me to? Even after you become a senior carer in the UK, you will not remain just a senior carer. You think of your career progression. And with this course, you can also go and do adult nursing. You can also use this as a stepping stone to do mental health nursing as well. Thank you. All right, thank you. And um, Vivian is just coming and she's saying, I'm already a nurse practicing in in Nigeria, how can I apply to become a senior carer in the UK? Vivian, we've answered this question. Don't worry. And um, this video is always here. Just go through it and you'll get your answer, okay? Um, like I said, for those who are just coming, this video is here. It's not going anywhere. You can always watch re watch it and get all the details and all the information. Trust me, you. this is really informative and you would want to even share it to your friends so that they can get it. This is like information from the horse's mouth, right? So you're hearing it firsthand from somebody who is also a recruiter in the UK. So whatever she tells you, just take it from her and just begin to do the need for, right? Reach out to them today so that you two can come and testify on how you are, you know, you listen to this live stream and now you are in the UK as a carer, as a senior carer, and even as a nurse. So thank you so much, Grammatorial, for coming. Thank you, everyone who joined us live. Thank you guys for staying. For those who has been with us from the beginning to the end, thank you. For those who joined midway, thank you. For those who are just joining, thank you. So thank you, guys, um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye -bye. See you again. See you again. Thank you, Tochi. Bye. Bye. Bye.